What's up guys, my name is Lily, and today we're talking about credit scores. Typically this channel focuses on real estate investing, but credit scores are a huge part, not only of just our daily lives, but if you wanna be a real estate investor, if you wanna start house hacking or purchasing properties to renovate and flip or keep as rentals, credit scores are going to be hugely important. But even if you don't wanna be a real estate investor, Credit scores are a key part of not just buying a house, but in taking out any type of loan, whether it be a student loan, a car loan, how much interest you pay on those loans, and even seemingly unrelated things like getting a job or getting on a monthly cell phone payment plan. So if you're a new or aspiring property owner, or you just wanna make sure that our messed up credit score system doesn't bite you in the butt when you wanna do something and make an adult decision, this video is for you because I'm gonna give you three action items for how you can can navigate the credit score system and the sponsor of this video also has a way for 35% of the population to immediately boost their credit score. More on that coming up. Before we get started, don't forget to change the color of the like button. It really does help out the channel. I appreciate it very, very much. So let's dive in. Well, your credit score is a number between 300 and 850 that is supposed to tell people who are gonna lend you money how likely you are to pay that money back. That's the simple of what it's supposed to do. But the way the system is set up can be pretty arbitrary and confusing and at its worst, very, very unfair. As a basic overview, there are three credit reporting agencies that collect information on you, like how often and how on time you pay your bills, how many bills you have, et cetera, et cetera. And they use that information to build a credit report and a credit score. You may have heard of these credit reporting agencies before. It's Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. But here's our first problem. These three agencies all use slightly different algorithms and models to come up with your credit score. So you can have three different scores and some can be more in your favor and others can be less in your favor, all built off of the same exact information. But it's also worth noting, I think, that credit scores weren't even a thing until 1989. Before then, it wasn't really an industry standard to evaluate people's credit worthiness and financial situation. And we can't ignore the fact that in 1989, when this whole credit score thing started, Americans held about $2.8 billion of debt, which sounds like a lot until you compare it to the fact that today, Americans have $28 billion of debt. So that means a lot more debt for a lot more people trying to do things with credit scores that maybe aren't all that helpful. And while we don't know the exact algorithm that the three agencies use to come up with our credit score, we do have some general guidelines and they go like this. Your payment history, which accounts for about 35% of your score. The amount of debt you owe, which accounts for about 30%. Then you've got the length of your credit history. We'll talk about that in a moment, which accounts for 15%. And then you've got new credit accounts that count for 10%. And you've got the type of credit mix that you have, which counts for 10%. We'll also talk about that. But to start at the beginning, the biggest factor in building your credit score is your payment history, AKA, do you pay your bills on time? At first, this seems completely reasonable to me. If someone is gonna lend me money, they wanna know how likely am I to pay it back to them at the agreed upon date. Cool, no problem. But the penalty for a single late payment is pretty steep and it can stay with you for a long time. And the longer you go without paying that bill, the more it affects you. So 60 days late is worse than 30 days late and 90 days late is worse than 60 days late. And that single 90 day late payment can drop your score by up to 180 points. So if you had a 700 score, that puts you in the good category. And that one 90 day late payment, whether it be a medical bill or some other type of emergency, that 180 point drop drops you to 520, which puts you in the poor category and can exclude you from many, many things that you need to do to be a functioning adult. And get this, that late payment stays on your report for up to seven years. So mistakes can really hurt you now and also later after you've supposedly learned from them. So action item number one to survive the credit score system is to set yourself up with automatic payments that are going to pay off your credit accounts in full every month. 
If you spend $1,000 on your credit card, you need to pay off $1,000 on your credit card on that next bill. Because if you carry a balance, if you only pay off $500, you carry that $500 balance to the next month, not only are they gonna charge you a ridiculous amount of interest, like 25 something percent, it also plays into that second category that makes up your score, which is the amount that you owe. So if you're only paying the minimum or you're not paying off your full balance, not only could you be hurting yourself if you're late on any of those payments, but you're also hurting yourself because the amount that you owe is continually going up. And speaking of payments, one of the payments that's going to have the biggest impact on our credit score that most of us will make is our mortgage payment. So for all the house hackers and property owners out there, you know how important it is to receive rent so that mortgage payment can be paid in full and on time. But one of the biggest discrepancies in the credit score system is that property owners, your mortgage payment counts positively towards your credit score. It helps to build it up and show that you pay your bills in full and all time. But renters who make up 35% of the population, that rent payment does not go towards helping build up their credit scores. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes in to help right this wrong. Rent Ready is an online platform that lets you, the property owner, from the palm of your hand, control just about every aspect of your rental portfolio. Whether you're starting out as a house hacker, you already have multiple rentals, Rent Ready lets you screen tenants, collect rent, and even manage maintenance requests right from the app. And probably even more importantly for the context of this video, Rent Ready allows rent payments to be reported to the credit bureau to help build your renter's credit score. Just collecting rent to your bank account through the Rent Ready app. Obviously, this is gonna be super helpful for your tenants to get that boost in their credit score from something they're already doing every month anyway. And for you as a property owner, when you're placing your property out there for rent and prospective tenants see one property that doesn't help boost their credit score by reporting it to the credit bureaus and another one that does, that tenant's more likely to choose you, which is gonna cut down on your vacancy time and your costs. And they're also gonna be more likely to pay their rent in full, on time, every time, because they also know how important it is to get that boost in that positive reporting to the credit agencies. I'm now using Rent Ready for all of the properties in my portfolio and definitely giving my tenants the option to have those payments reported to the credit bureau to help their credit score. And so I'm very happy to recommend Rent Ready to you guys, which would usually cost you as little as $9 a month for unlimited properties. But the folks at Rent Ready have thrown in an extra bonus for you guys and for this channel. So if you use the code Lili, we know it's L-I-L-I, -I, no Y's in my name. If you use L-I-L-I, at checkout, they're gonna cut that cost in half. So you actually be paying less than $5 a month for all of these great features, which I mean doesn't make much sense not to take advantage of. So use the link in my description to head over there and check them out. Don't forget to use Lily at checkout for 50% off your purchase, and we can all start doing our small part to help fix the credit score system. Speaking of, it's time for action item number two. And if you ever want to qualify for a loan, to buy a house, to buy a car, anything like that, you're going to want a good low interest rate, which is gonna make that loan a cheaper for you in terms of your monthly payment. So action item number two is to think very carefully before you close out your oldest credit accounts. Remember, 15% of your score is based on the length of your credit history. So if you have an old credit card that you don't use anymore, it might actually be helping you to keep that open, even though you're not using it, because it shows a longer credit history. So that card from two, five years ago, as long as it doesn't have like an annual fee that's costing you money, keeping it open is actually showing a longer credit history, which is more favorable in the eyes of the credit agencies. I recently heard it on a podcast that your rate equals your risk. And this is something that I don't agree with, but it's good to know as you're dealing with and navigating the system. Because when you go to get a loan, the higher interest rate that they give you means that they're looking at you as a higher risk to pay that money back. And so if you have a better credit score, and in this case, a longer credit history, you'll get a lower interest rate because you'll be seen as less of a risk and that loan will be cheaper for you. So again, think it through carefully before you close any old accounts. And if you don't have any accounts, you might wanna think about opening some up so that you can start building that credit history. And I know this is where the Dave Ramsey minions are gonna come in and say that all credit is bad and evil. So let's go ahead and jump right into action item number three, which is to use your credit intelligently. Because the truth is, it's very hard to function in this society without using some type of credit. 
because your credit score comes into play for so many things. And 15% of that score is made up of your length of history, like we just talked about. And another 10% is made up of your type of credit. So you may have heard somebody say like, oh, I paid off my car note or I paid off my student loans and my credit score went down, which truly doesn't make any sense. But the reason that's happening is because of that 10%, the type of credit that you have, the credit mix. If you've got a car note, a mortgage, and let's say a student loan, well, that's a credit mix that has three different types of credit. If you pay off one of those, now you've only got two, and that's seen as worse by the credit bureaus. I know, I know. So whether or not you agree with the system, whether or not you think it makes sense, it's gonna be beneficial for you to understand how it works and to keep that in mind before you make decisions. Understanding these three action items is gonna help you boost your credit score and I'm gonna be using Rent Ready and I recommend that you do too so that if you have tenants, they can also be using those payments to boost their credit score. Don't forget, I've got a link in the description so you can check out Rent Ready and don't forget to use the code Lily at checkout so you can get 50% off. And until next time, thanks so much for watching.